If you're thinking about getting a piece of rural land or you already own, say, 10 acres or more, this video will probably help you out quite a bit. There's a huge resurgence of people moving out of the big cities and trying to find land. How do I know this? Because every single available piece of property around us within like 20 miles has been purchased in the past year. For various reasons, people are moving rural. It's a combination of returning to self-sufficiency and also, you got a lot of freedom out here, guys. You're not gonna get a traffic citation driving to your neighbor's house. We all kind of police ourselves. Taxes are considerably lower than in town. Property taxes are a big deal. Folks moving out of California paying $30,000 a year in property taxes are moving to Texas and paying 1200 bucks a year. And there's also no state income tax here. So about 15 years ago now, I lived in downtown Dallas, but I knew I wanted to get back to my roots. So we moved out to the country, picked up a couple acres, and we bought a compact tractor. A few years later, we moved to another location, made a pretty good profit off of our initial purchase, and now we're on 20 acres on a lake. Been awesome. I've always been a country boy at heart, but I adapted to the city no problem. And when it was time for me to go back, I took a lot of the skills I learned along the way with me. So I'm a welder, fabricator, body technician. I'm learning machining right now. Um, I know my way around a chainsaw. We own a sawmill. I've got this Mahindra tractor right here. And I spend a lot of time behind the sticks of various pieces of equipment. Quite a few, in fact. I can run excavators. I can activate excavators. <laughs> thing about that is anyone watching the vi these videos they can as well you can learn to operate any piece of equipment in a matter of minutes and then you become more efficient the more time you sit in the seat when it came to purchase a tractor i chose this mahindra right here and there wasn't a lot of information out about it one of the things i liked about it it was kind of a bare bones tractor it had like older technology clutch operated gearbox the whole nine yards it's so old school that it doesn't even have synchronizers that kind of annoys me a little bit. I'd really like to have some synchronizers in my transmission. And we've had some problems with this tractor, and we've had some problems with the dealership. All in all, owning this tractor has been kind of positive. But if I had to do it again, would I do it differently? The answer to that question is a resounding absolutely. And let me tell you what I would buy. On paper, compact tractors seem fantastic. If you've got five acres, you don't do a lot of tree work, you don't do a lot of digging, um, you're just doing kind of lawn maintenance. I mean, you can't beat like the little Kubota BXs. Those are fantastic. You can use it it's all in one. You get a lawnmower, you get all the attachments you need, and it's a good size tractor, and they'll do enough. And then for times when you have a little bit heavier work to do, you can just go rent a piece of equipment. Now, a lot of people don't realize that anyone can walk into a rental store as long as you got a truck big enough to haul it and you can rent any sort of mini sized piece of equipment now your giant excavators you're gonna have to have about a million dollars worth of liability coverage to rent those but that's actually not that expensive so that's a really good option but if you have more land and you're dealing with the like this is my front yard behind me these are just the trees in my front yard we have 20 acres of super tall pines we have tons of hardwoods out here and we have a sawmill so we do some logging we plan on building our own pond so if you're a do-it-yourselfer and you like maintaining your property yourself then i don't know if a tractor a wheeled tractor is right for you the thought process behind these things is that it's like a you can put a ton of stuff on the back you can put a ton of stuff on the front and you can get to work you got a grapple bucket you can get you know tiller on the rear um, you can put forks on it and all that sounds incredibly good and it is it's useful I mean it's so handy I if I had to go a week without this thing it would it would suck I mean it really honestly would but if I had to do it again I would not buy this tractor instead I would buy the true Swiss Army knife of equipment and that is a skid steer and let me explain why anything that you can put on one of these tractors you can put on a skid steer so if you need to till you can buy a tiller for your skid steer so let's say you have a small garden it's just for you and your family it's not a huge plot you're not a farmer which is going to be the case for most people with small pieces of property and you want to till your garden so you grab this thing you got like maybe a hundred foot section by 50 foot or whatever good luck tilling it with this like you're gonna have to till back up till back up till and it can be a bit of a pain in the butt you're certainly not making any corners you know these seasons these things take a while to turn and your tillers way on the back your front end loaders way on the front and it's not the tightest turning radius now your smaller tractors they would work better in that situation but they're not going to do as good as a bobcat you just go forward you till backwards you go forward you till backwards you go forward you till backwards you do that once and you're done you disconnect your bucket and you connect to whatever it is you need next and you go to work now i'm not going to buy a hundred thousand dollar new one i would buy a used one there are huge benefits to buying a used bobcat over buying a brand new tractor like this mahindra namely you are getting a lot more equipment for the money so this is not an industrial machine and i don't think a lot of people know that 
your standard farm implement tractors are not built to handle the kind of stuff that construction equipment can handle. They're just way stronger. They're designed for the rigors of an industrial application as opposed to the hobby farm. Therefore, the steel is thicker, the parts are beefier. They're also occasionally a little more expensive, but that's not the case with this. I mean, an alternator on this turd is uh, $700. It's got 300 hours on it, and it's broken. So buying a piece of used industrial equipment like a bobcat or a mini excavator, the positive thing about that is you're working with a piece of equipment that tends to have a little more longevity, and at the price point, you can sometimes get them under the price of this piece of equipment. Now, the likelihood of you having to fix some stuff right when you get it is pretty high. You're going to have to take care of some maintenance issues, some wear issues, and some of that can be expensive. But guys, this tractor has spent a lot of time in the shop. It's got 300 hours on it, and I've spent a ton of money to the point where, from the day I bought this tractor, I've had buyer's remorse. And make no mistake, at the price point of compact tractors, this Mahindra can outperform every one of them as far as lifting and all of that stuff. It's just kind of cheaply made. When we bought this, we bought it with some upgrades. I went ahead and bought a box blade, post hole digger, a couple other things. Also, I had them install a third function, and I got a grapple bucket from Mahindra. And the reason I did all that was warranty. There's no warranty on tractors. Just stop it. Don't ever think. I don't care who says they have a warranty on tractors. Some are better than others, but... I mean, they're going to try to find a way to get you to pay for it. Mahindra, not one thing has ever been covered on this tractor under warranty. Just not. And it's had problems. The problems haven't been big problems. They've been annoying problems that shut the tractor down when you need it most, like the computer system, um, the charging system, uh, stuff like that. And those are things you're going to have to overcome. If you can change the brakes on your car, um, you can pretty much work on any skid steer. I mean, it's really not that complicated. They don't usually have a lot of problems with the motors. Um, your final drives are really just bolts. I mean, it's... It can be a pain in the butt, but there's techniques to work on these. You know, they're, they are bigger and the parts are heavier. So maybe you need a little engine hoist. You can go down to Harbor Freight and buy one pretty cheap. Once you've done all the upkeep and maintenance, they're good for a long time. And once again, they're tough. The chances of you wearing one out is far less than this. I mean, they don't have tires to slice open. So had I done it again, I would have done that. I would have bought a skid steer. Now I am buying a new piece of equipment and it's not going to be a skid steer. The reason is... I own this Mahindra, so this will be my backup. But another piece of equipment I highly recommend is a mini excavator. So you could get like a small used Kubota tractor for a couple thousand dollars, one of the little guys. You can get a small used Kubota tractor without a front end loader on it for next to nothing. I mean, maybe three, four thousand dollars. It'll do all your tilling, it'll do all your mowing, you can take care of all that, you don't need any other implements for it. If you want to disc up a field, you've got that capability. And you're not in it a ton of money. Then you turn around and you spend ten to twenty thousand dollars. You find a nice little mini excavator, and now you can get some serious work done. Now I'm going to say this: if you're working on trees, if you're moving brush around, if you have any digging to do on your property whatsoever, even if you're blading out a driveway or you need to, you're clearing land, there is nothing better than a mini excavator for that. I absolutely love it. I spend a lot of time. I've, it's the piece of equipment I rent more often than not. Um, skid steers are fantastic. I really, really like them. But for versatility um, uh, and, and what you can do, an excavator with a thumb is just, just an incredible piece of equipment. And if I had an excavator with a thumb and I had a subcompact tractor to handle the rest, we'd, we'd be done. So I'm going to buy an excavator. I'm going to buy one here pretty soon. I'm going to go a little bit larger than what I usually get. I'm looking for a mid-size excavator, and that'll be coming. We'll show you guys that. My recommendation for you is to not spend a ton of money on your first tractor. Buy yourself a used tractor, learn how to use it, get a small tractor, and then when you're ready or you need something a little beefier, maybe try renting a bobcat. Just go rent one, see if you like it on your property, and then if that works for you, you can purchase one. If you're doing a lot of work like we are, my mistake was not doing that. Um, I'd have so much more work done on my property had I done that. I'm not saying you can't get the work done on this. When you're working with 100 foot tall pine trees, this tractor is not going to be much help for you. You're not going to dig the roots out of the ground. I could go buy a stump grinder for five grand that will attach to the back of this and that'll do fine for grinding stumps. But I don't want stumps on my property. I want to pop them out of the ground. Excavator, mini excavator makes quick work of that. Let's face it, dude, you're operating a giant robot. I mean, it is literally like, you know, Voltron when we were kids. You can have, it's fun. It's awesome. It's a blast. It's a joy. And when you're done at the end of the day, you have done, you've gotten so much work done. So standard convention would say spend your money on a compact tractor. Heck, you can even get one with a backhoe. You can take a John Deere 310. And if you're digging a trench, you can set a, an excavator right next to it. Just a mini X, not even a midi. Um, it'll have less power 
lower, it doesn't matter. It's got a swing. It can swing 360 degrees around, and you just can't do that with a backhoe. Tell me what you think in the comment section. Now that I own this tractor, I mean, I honestly, I could sell it right now um, and get another piece of equipment. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to ride this one till it dies. I think the engine, transmission, all that is pretty sound in here. And uh, we're going to have wiring problems. We're going to have plug problems. We're going to have standard Mahindra problems. And I'll deal with those. Kind of just don't want to stick anybody else with a tractor that, you know, may not be the best for them. Um, but I can handle anything that comes with this. But excavator's definitely on the way, so I'm super excited about that. I wish we would have done it first. I wish I would have known what I did now, and hopefully you guys who are biting off, you know, 20 acres. Um, say you're biting off 15 acres. Say you're biting off 10 acres. I'd say 10 acres and above with trees, and you plan on doing a lot of work on the property. A farm tractor is not right for you at all. If you're farming, buy whatever tractor you want. Um, it doesn't make any sense, but if you're out there and you're starting with a raw piece of land, yeah, get yourself a bobcat. It'll do everything you want to do and more. I said bobcat. Don't get a bobcat. Uh, they, they are not the best built machines. There are other manufacturers out there that just make a better unit. So, in fact, every time I've rented an actual bobcat, it's broken down somehow on the property. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, just stay away from bobcat. But, yeah, grab yourself a mini excavator and a small tractor, and you'll be in for twenty grand. That is 4000 less than I sit, spent on this whole thing. Um, I still own 9000 on this tractor. I could probably sell it right now for 12000 So did I get $15,000 worth of use out of this tractor so far if I sold it today? It's got 310 hours. And that's not bad. And we still get to keep the tractor after we're done. In closing, my suggestion would be rent a couple pieces of equipment, okay? Get to know the equipment and then make your decision before you purchase. These are big purchases that you guys are going to live with for a very long time. So make sure you make the right decision and don't buy based on emotion. Um, this is one of those things where it all has to be, you have to wait, you have to wait for the perfect unit. You can't just say, uh, tomorrow we need to go out and buy a tractor because if you do that, you're making a huge mistake. You need to spend about a month looking for the right one. Hopefully it'll come up for you. You need to have it checked out. I'd have it inspected by mechanic. Um, you know, just do whatever you can. If you're buying a used tractor to make sure that you're getting the value because nothing's worse than spending 10 to 20 grand bringing something home and having it immediately break or find out that you bought something that's just a bad tractor from the beginning okay enough's enough thanks guys uh comments please and uh i'm, I'm not bashing these tractors i love my tractor i could sell it right now i'm not going to sell it i'm going to keep it it does a really great job um i don't hate my tractor i talk a lot of crap about it i'm frustrated about it i do, I do not think mahindra makes the best equipment there's a reason it's cheaper guys it's it's cheap i got work to do we'll talk to you guys later thanks for watching bye